All right, I think we should be good to go. Let's get started, everybody. Welcome to Microsoft Excel Basics. My name is Maggie. I am a librarian here with the Plano Public Library. We also have Jamie, another Plano librarian, joining, a, joining us to help facilitate the chat. This class has been designed around knowing some basic computer skills, including using the mouse and keyboard. If you do need a brush up or wish to learn more about basic computer skills, we have some online resources for you. I will try to take it slow as this is a basics class. And if you're practicing along with me, hopefully you are able to. So thank you in advance for your patience. And welcome again to Microsoft Excel Basics. The goal for today's class is to get to know Microsoft Excel, become friends with Microsoft Excel with a brief review of the workspace. And then we'll dive into the program and use a few of its tools. As I said earlier in the email regarding this class with the Zoom link, there's also a link to a Google Drive. I have it circled here, example. This is where you can get the practice spreadsheet I will be using for today's class. So I'm actually gonna hop on over to my Google Drive and open that up. All right. Here's the Google Drive. This will take you to when you click on that link to open up this spreadsheet, you'll need to download it to your computer. So you can either click on this downward arrow here, or if you click to open, it also pops up here in the upper right hand corner. So download. And it will pop up in your downloads folder, or if you're using Chrome down here in the bottom left hand corner, click to open. And here we are. We are now in Excel. I'm going to go ahead and click on this enable editing. You might have that pop up. So just go ahead so you can start to work on the program. All right. So what are we looking at here? This is a spreadsheet for a fictional business with a list of employees and their monthly sales figures for a year. Today, we are going to organize, calculate, and print this data after a brief review of Excel. So we are going to go from top to bottom and just point out all the things you might need to know for today's class. So up at the very top, that's known as the Quick Access Toolbar. Quick Access Toolbar includes the Save button, Undo, Undo, can be your best friend. Redo. And you can actually add more tools to your quick access toolbar by clicking on this down arrow. It brings down a drop box and I'm going to go ahead and add spelling. Add spell check to my quick access toolbar so I have it right there to constantly see how I'm spelling. <laughs> Okay, below our quick access toolbar is what is called the ribbon. The ribbon's right there. Starting with the file tab, the first tab, we have a few options to open a new document, save, save as, print. So back arrow, back out to our home ribbon. And now we are on the home tab. This is the default tab and will show up when you open Excel. And on the home tab, it has all the major tools you most frequently use. They can also be found in other tabs. It just depends. The tabs on the tools on the home tab include changing your font. So font type, font size, moving over to the right, placement, alignment of your text and data, 
Next to that, we have some number formatting options. Next to that is some style tools. Moving further along down are the cell tools where you can insert and delete. And the last one here, we have some editing tools, which include some basic, basic formulas in sorting, organizing, of course, find and select. All right. Next, we're going to find the insert tab. Insert is where you can add some fun charts. Perhaps you need to add a hyperlink to a web address. That's right here to the right hand side. If you need to add a header and footer to your spreadsheet, it's here on the insert tab. The next tab we have is page layout where you can figure out your orientation, your margins, select your print area. The next tab over is formulas. And this is all the formulas you may possibly need to work through Excel. I'm just gonna bring this down. My bar is right there in the way. So there we go. All the formulas you may possibly need right there. The next tab over is the data tab where you can filter, sort, and streamline the look and function of your data. Some of these tools are on the home tab and we'll be using those today. Next to the data tab is the review tab. The review ribbon is great for when you are working with others on a spreadsheet. You can share comments with others, determine who can edit, protect your workbook or sheet so nobody can make changes, whatever you need. Next to that is the view tab, which determines what your screen will look like as you work. And last, there is a developer tab with macros. Macros are for advanced users in order to automate some of those processes you often do in Excel. So we'll come back to the ribbon as we start to organize our data here, but continuing on with the review of the program, we're jumping down here on the sheet. It's with all these little boxes here that's known as a sheet. And each of those boxes is actually called a cell. When a cell is selected, the name of the cell will show up in a box right here on the left-hand side. This is known as the name box. For example, I selected the cell with March written in it. This cell is in column D, row one. So in the name box, the selected cell is D1. The cell names will be helpful when it comes to utilizing formulas. It'll make sense. The column headings right here, A, B, C, D, are alphabetical, while row headings are numerical, one, two, three, four, and so on. You cannot change these. The column headings will always be alphabetical, A, B, C, D, etc. And the row headings will always be numerical, one, two, three, four, and so on. Next to the name box, we have the formula bar right here. You'll see March. The formula bar will show text or formulas being used in whatever cell you have selected. So right now, I have selected D1, which says March. But if I come over here to F3, my number is there. So if you need to make any edits to your cell, you can make them in the formula bar by clicking. I need to add another number, backspace. Or if you need to, if you want to edit within the cell, you'll double click on the cell in order to add any text numbers formulas to it. All right. At the bottom of your screen down here on the left-hand side, 
A spreadsheet can have multiple tabs or sheets. More on that later. We'll actually create a couple more sheets. And below that to the right is some zooming options. You can adjust your view. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit closer so my numbers are big for you all to see. So that is a review of our workspace. Now let's dive into organizing and formatting our data here. At first glance, I noticed that some of the data looks a little squished, specifically the names of the months, February, September, and November. So first way to change this is you can take your cursor and hover it between column headings. You'll see your cursor change from that white plus sign into a vertical line with arrows out to the left and right. Come over here to the rows, your cursor will turn into a horizontal line with arrows facing up and down. When, that curse, when the cursor changes to this, you can double click and resize the width of your columns. So in between C and D, I'm going to double click on that line and it auto adjusts to the best fit for that specific column. But I kind of want my columns to all be even no matter the size of my data or text. And we can do that with one big swoop. So to make all the columns even no matter what, we'll click on this arrow in the left hand corner of our sheet. What that does is it highlights our whole sheet here. We're going to come over here to the right in our cells tool block on the home tab. Click on the drop down option for format. And we are adjusting the column width. So click on that. And so here it wants us to put a number in. I'm going to try a low number at first to see what happens. So let's type in three and okay. Oh no, that, that squished it too much, not good. That's okay. The sheet is still highlighted. So we'll come back over here to our format tool. Click on the drop down option. Click column width. And let's try 10 this time. Oh, I like that. I like the look of that. We're good. Okay. Now that we're here and we just learned how to highlight our whole spreadsheet, let's go ahead and do that again. So click on the arrow in the upper left hand corner of the sheet to highlight. And let's go ahead and change the font of our data here. So come to the font tools and I'm going to select Arial, a nice basic text style. There we go. I like the look of that. Moving on, I now want to differentiate my months from the rest of my data by adding a fill color to those cells. Adding a color does help differentiate a cell, a column, or a row. So if I wanted to change the fill color of a whole row, I could easily click on the row heading here, one, and it would highlight the whole row. That's one way of doing it. But I'm going to just highlight the months. So what I'm going to do is click on January and you click and drag to highlight all the way down to December. If you accidentally highlight the row underneath it, that's okay. You can click and drag down to December. And right here in our font tools, there's that paint bucket. With the drop down option, you can find the color that works best for you. I'm going to go with a nice professional dark gray. That looks nice. So while I'm here and I have my months highlighted, I would also just like to center those the names of the months in the middle of the cell. 
So come in over here to the alignment tools. I'm gonna find the center tool right here. And now our months are center in the cell. All right, that's looking good. I like my data so far. So for the sake of organizing my data, I want to list the employees in alphabetical order. So to do that, I'm going to click on column header A to highlight the whole column, all my employees listed here. We're coming back over to the top right-hand corner to find sort and filter. We can click for the options and here we go. We have sort A to Z as our first option. Awesome, so go ahead on that. Aha, and we have a sort warning. This is wanting to know what you wanna sort. So you will want to probably expand the selection 99% of the time because that includes all corresponding data. It keeps everything together, just sorts it appropriately. The other option will only alphabetize the current column and it would keep all the data as it is. So that would be putting Ellis with Pedro's numbers. That would be bad. That would mess up my whole data set I have here. So I'm going to stick with expand the selection and sort. Here we go. I've got my employees in alphabetical order. And oh no, I just noticed an employee is missing from my spreadsheet. So time to add a row for Steven. So there's a couple ways of adding rows. You can either select, first select a cell, right click, and there is an insert option here. Shifting cells right and down gets a little problematic as well as expanding that corresponding data previously. Most of the time, you'll probably, probably want to insert an entire row or column just most of the time. I barely just shifted things one by one. It can become a mess. So we can do an entire row this way. Hmm, and it added it below Wanda. That's not really helpful if we're keeping our employees in alphabetical order. So what it did is it inserted a row above my current selection. So in order to add Steven in the right place, I want to click on Wanda here so it goes in between Ricky and Wanda. So I could either right click to insert or over here on the right side of your home tab with the cells, there is drop down option to insert row here. All right, we got a spot for Steven and I have his number. So let's type in Steven. And his numbers for the year are 315 for January, 845 for February, 707 for March, 928 for April, 348 for May, 46 for June, July is 47. August 52, September is 687, October is 768, November is 925, and December 816. Awesome, Stephen has been added with his sales figures. Okay. Now I am interested in adding a total sales column for each employee. And what I want to do is I want to insert this column right next to the employee's name. So I can see their total sales for the year just right there next to the name, make it easy. So as we saw earlier, when you insert a row, it's inserted above your current cell selection. If you want to insert a column, it will be added to the left 
of your current cell selection. So let me just come over here to the middle and show you. There's a couple of options of inserting a column like a row. So you could right click, insert an entire column, and here it comes to the left. But of course, that's not where I said I wanted my column to be. So we'll do undo because undo is your best friend. Let's come over here to column B and I can find insert in the upper right hand corner, insert a column. There we go. Now I'm going to label this total sales. And for the fun of it, I'm going to make that bold. And look, it started to bleed into the next cell. I'm not gonna go ahead and change all the cell width again. I'm just going to double click in between B and C to auto fit the column. There we are. So now that our column is ready, we can start doing some calculations. We are going to use a formula to calculate the total sum of each employee's monthly sales figures. Starting with our first employee here, Betty, I'm going to click on the empty cell where I want the number to go. And over here on the editing tools of our home tab, we have a few basic formulas ready right here. So click on the drop down option and find sum. And now it's wanting to know what numbers are you wanting to use for this formula? Best way to do it is click the cell for the first month. And we are going to click and drag all the way down to December. All right, it's pulling data from C2 all the way to N2 and we'll hit enter. We've got our total sales for Betty. All right, let's do that again for Colton. So I have the cell selected where I want the calculation to go. But this time, let's find that formula in the formulas tab here. So, so many formulas, but we're gonna stick with the basic sum addition. So right here, auto sum, sum. And what numbers do we wanna use? Yep, we're going to click January and highlight all the way down to December for Colton. Once we're finished, hit enter. Let's come back to that total sales figure for Colton. I click on the cell and now our formula appears here in the formula bar. So each formula starts with an equal sign, the name of the formula, open parentheses, and all the sale, cell names for all the data you want to use in that formula. So it starts with C3, then the colons is basically a hyphen, means everything from C3 all the way down to N3. As you use formulas over and over again, it'll get easier, easier to understand, easier to see when mistakes are happening, why is it not working? It just, more, the more you use it, the more you will feel comfortable. And I hope you continue to use formulas and attend our formulas and functions class next Wednesday. <laughs> okay. So instead of creating a formula for each and every employee I have listed here, Excel has a tool to auto populate. So to use this formula for the rest of the column, I'm going to click on total sales for Colton. And in that selected cell, there is a square square cube down here in the bottom right hand corner of the cell. And as you can see, the mouse cursor is a white plus sign, but when I hover over that square, it turns into a smaller black plus line. That means you can click and drag 
all the way down to fill in the formula for each employee. And there we go. I'll do that one more time so you can see. So I'm gonna undo, find that bolded square in the bottom right hand corner of the cell, click and drag it all the way down to the last cell you want to apply that formula. There we go. So Excel's auto population tool is quite good at filling in data, whether it's dates, numbers, or calculations like this. Excel can be pretty smart in figuring out what it is that you're wanting to do. So another example of this auto populate, I'm going to come down here and just show you. If we wanna do days of the week, I'll type Monday, and then we have Tuesday. And then on Tuesday here, I'm going to grab that square, drag it on down, and it auto populates the rest of the days of the week. I like the auto populate tool. It makes life easy. But I'm not gonna need that. So I'm going to click, drag and highlight all those cells and hit delete on my keyboard. Right. Now that I have total sales for each one of the employees, I'm interested in organizing the employees by total sales from highest to lowest, but also keep them in alphabetical order. This will require a custom sort. So I'm going to first highlight my whole spreadsheet to do this and come back over to the home tab. And on the right hand side with our editing tools is the sort and filter. Click on the drop down option and click on custom sort. So custom sort has the ability to sort by layers. Like I said, I want to sort my employees by their sales figure first and then alphabetically after that. So first we're going to sort by total sales. We're gonna keep it on values, but there's a couple other options to sort it on based on what it is, cell color, font color, whatever you'd like, but we'll keep it values. And I said, we wanna do largest to smallest, my highest earners. So we'll change that from largest to smallest. Add another level to keep them in alphabetical order. So then I'm going to sort by, I didn't give a header for my A1 column. So I'm gonna go back and change that when we get to it. But for now, we'll select column A, the empty header here, and we'll keep it A to Z. And okay. So now we have sorted by highest sales down in alphabetic order. While it doesn't seem like it's super helpful with this particular spreadsheet and it's limited data, custom sorting does really help you have when you have rows and rows and columns of columns of data and you need to sort and figure out what's going on. All right. I'm going to click out to unhighlight my sheet. So now I am interested in knowing the average sales per month. So I'm gonna start here in column C with my January data. Click on the last cell below Pedro and we're gonna add another formula. This time we're gonna use average to find out our monthly averages. So Come over here to our editing tools, drop down option for average formula. And since we're going underneath the data set, Excel is like, hey, is this the data you're wanting to use? And I say, yes, hit enter. That's the calculation I want. Thank you, Excel. So I'm gonna click on that cell and here we have our formula listed. Again, all formulas start with the equal sign, the name of the formula, open parentheses, the name of the cell for the first part of the data set, 
all the way down to the name of the cell for the last data set to include. So another way I could do this is I want to tell Excel, find the average of these numbers. So I'm going to click and highlight all the cells in February, come over here to our formulas and find that average again. And there we go. So there's a couple few different ways of adding in a formula. You'll start to find a rhythm that works best for you in understanding how to use formulas in your own data sheets. So right now I'm seeing numbers with a lot of decimal points and I, I'm not interested in having that many decimal points. That's okay. I can formulate that or change that, more so change that, no formula is needed. So I'm going to click and highlight those two cells. And there are number formatting options here in the middle of the home tab. Drop down option will reveal them all the formatting options. So if you wanted to make it into currency by selecting that, it would add a dollar sign and then to two decimal points. If you have a date, you can format how the date looks, whether it's a short date like that or a long date all written out, including the day of the week. You can figure out what your time looks like, percentages, scientific notation, etc. So I like clicking on more number formats because when I do, it brings up all the options again, but it also gives me the sample. I like to see what it will look like as my final product. So this is a number. So I'm going to find the number. And it's offering to change it to do two decimal points. I'm going to go down to zero decimal points because all my other data are whole numbers. So let's keep it at zero decimal points. If you had larger numbers, you can select whether to add a comma in between the thousand marks. And then if you had negative numbers, you can determine whether it would have a minus sign or if it would be red or in parentheses or in parentheses red. Whatever you want to do with your data in a way that makes sense to you. So at zero decimal places, I'm going to click OK. And there it goes. It rounded it to whole numbers. But actually, I changed my mind. I think I do want to have two decimal places. That's OK. Going to come back up here to our number formatting. Find that drop down, more number formats, and change it to two decimal places. All right. I like the look of that. That's what I need for my data. So as we did with our total sales and auto populating the formula, we can do that again with our average sales here. So I'm going to click on D13 with our formula. You'll see that square in the bottom right hand corner of our cell. The cursor hovering over it would change to a black plus sign. So you click and drag that all the way to December. All right. And we have our average sales for the year from January to December. I like that. What I'm going to go ahead and do, I want to change these to bold so they really pop out. So you click and highlight all your cells that you want to change. Change it to bold. And again, I'm going to do that with the average sales figures down here. Click and highlight all the cells you want to change. And make that bold. Yeah. It just helps it pop out a little bit more and differentiates between the monthly sales figures and the totals and averages. Whatever works for you and how you process your information here. So I want to show you one of my favorite tools when you have rows and rows or columns of columns of data or both. You can freeze rows and columns. So as you scroll down, you can still see that column or row. Let me show you. 
So up here on the view tab, there is freeze panes. So click on it. You have the option to freeze the top row or you can freeze the first column. So let's go ahead, freeze the top row. When that happens, you'll see that the line becomes a little bit more bold. It's hard to tell with the fill color here, but you can see it under column A and B. So as I scroll down, my headings stay there. So while we can't change the name of these column headings, the alphabetical, you can freeze your top row so that any identifiers for your column stays as you scroll down. To undo, there is the option to unfreeze panes now. And let's do that again with the first column. So if I continued on with them, my employees for a whole nother year, I could freeze them and move further along in the spreadsheet to still see their names. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to unfreeze that. Now here's the fun one. If you want to freeze both a column and the row at the same time, you can. So I'm just going to show you real quick here in the middle of our data set. Find the freeze panes and the first option, freeze panes. It keeps rows and columns visible while the rest of the worksheet scrolls from your current selection. See that in action? There we go. Our bolded lines have appeared. And so everything above my cell that was selected and everything to the left is now frozen. So, pro tip, if you want to freeze both your first column and your first row, <coughs> you'll click on B2. I'm sorry, I need a sip of water. Well, first we'll need to unfreeze that. Sorry about that. Select B2, come back to freeze panes and click on freeze panes. So now everything above will stay and everything to the left will stay. It's just one of my favorite tools for if you have rows and rows or columns of columns of data and you are trying to figure out what that number means and your heading is way up there, freeze it so you can tell. So I'm going to unfreeze that for now as we continue to work. So this data is for one calendar year. I am interested in duplicating it for the next calendar year in a separate sheet. So down here at the bottom of your workspace is the different tabs for all your spreadsheets. I want to duplicate, so we can right click. You could insert, but insert would be a blank sheet. I want to keep all my formulas and whatnot, so I'm actually going to make a copy. Make sure if you want to create a copy, you actually click the box here, and I'm going to move it to the end. So now we have two sheets. We have our original sheet and sheet one, part two. That's a little confusing, so it's best to rename your sheets. You can easily rename by right clicking on the name and clicking on rename. So this data set is for 2019. You can type it and hit enter and right click, rename. This is for 20. 20. And I can click out. So now I have my two years. This data is from 2019. I don't have all my data yet for 2020, but I want to keep my formulas. So I'm not going to delete all my data here. I want to click and highlight all the monthly data. That was the 2019 data click and highlight just that space and find the delete button on your keyboard. And there we go. I have a nice 
blank-ish spreadsheet to start my 2020 sales figures. And as I input those, the formulas would go to work. Let me show you. So January, Wanda, we have, let's say 255. January, 132. Coming down to February for Colton, we have 99. My formulas are getting to work. I don't have to redo those. All right. Coming back to my 2019 spreadsheet, I'm kind of interested in adding a title to the spreadsheet. So that would require inserting a row above this current row. Come back to our home tab, insert and a row. Going to label it employees, employee sales 2019. So first of all, the title is overlapping into other cells, which you might like, or you can use merge and center options in the alignment box. I want to make this title appear right above my data set here. So I'm gonna click and highlight all the cells above the data and find our merge and center tool here in the alignment tools. And there we go. It turned it into one big sale cell and then centered the text right in the middle. So that looks lovely. I like the look of that a lot. Let's go ahead while I'm here, I'm going to uh, bold it, italicize and underline. We'll do all the things for our title. <laughs> so that is merge and center. Now let's take a look at wrapped text. You can wrap extra long text into multiple lines so you can see it all at one time. What does that mean? Let's do that. So with row 14, column A, I'm going to title this name of this row so we know what these numbers are. So it's average monthly sales which that looks okay, but I'm a stickler for things bleeding into other columns. So what I'm gonna do is click on that cell, find our wrap text tool, and there we go. But, oh no, it's disappeared. We'll have to adjust the height of our row here. So remember how to do the adjustments between our row headings here your cursor will turn into that black horizontal line with arrows facing up and down. And we'll just double click. And there we go. Looking good. I like the look of the data. So I think we are ready to print this 2019 report. But first, it is always a good idea to do spell check before printing or emailing out your report. And during the review of the quick access toolbar at the beginning, I added the spelling spell check tool to my quick access toolbar. So I'm going to go ahead, click on that. And do you wanna continue checking at the beginning? Yes, yes I do. Click yes, oh, and I did not spell April right. So yes, please change that. And I'm good to go. Thank you, Excel. So to print, you'll come over here to the file tab in our ribbon and head down to print. So there's quite a few options in here in the print tool, depending on how you want your printed reports to look. So right here, print active sheet. So this would print only 2019, what we are currently working on. If we wanted to print our entire workbook, it would print both the 2019 and 2020 sheet. And then if you choose print selection, it would only print any highlighting you had done. So if you only needed part of your data set, you could highlight that and then find this print selection here. 
Underneath that, you want to really take a look at your orientation here. Portrait would be great if you have more columns than rows. Well, sorry, portrait would be great if you have more rows than columns. And if you have more columns than rows, it would probably be best to do landscape. I have more columns than rows, so I'm going to keep it to landscape orientation. It's really what you are looking for to use your printed reports to whatever you need. Underneath that, the last option is perhaps my most important one when I wanna figure out how my reports are gonna look when I print them out. Scaling, so no scaling is current, the current selection. You'll notice on our print preview that October, November, and December are missing and it would be printed on a second sheet. I just want it all on one page. So I'm going to either fit sheet on one page, that certainly works, or I could fit all columns onto one page. There we go. I have October and November and December along with the rest of my data. That looks great. Or if you had more rows, perhaps you would fit all rows onto one page. Again, it's whatever you need for your printout to work for your needs. A couple test prints are bound to happen, so give it a shot. All right, do we have any questions that I can answer? Feel free to use that chat if you have any questions. you gather any, oh, did I hear? Looks like we do have one coming in. Okay. Do we need to wait? I can review Linda real quick. Someone would like us to demonstrate copy once again, as well as going over the formulas again. Okay. Copy the sheet, sorry, to clarify there. Okay, okay, do, okay. <laughs> Uh, yes, of course. So down here, if I wanted to duplicate my 2020 sheet, I could simply do a new sheet here, but it would be in a blank sheet. I wanted to copy my sheet to keep those formulas in place. So I'm going ahead and delete that one. You right click for all your options. Right clicking will always bring up your options you may need. So let's find move or copy. And in order to create a duplicate, you gotta make sure to check this box to create a copy. Let's move that into the center of the page. So right here, make sure to click that box. And I'm going to move that to the end. So it comes after it. And we can rename that for 2021 as that is fast approaching. Okay. Now back to quick formulas. I'll just take, go back to our 2019 sheet and I'll delete out our total sales for Wanda. You wanna have the cell selected where you want your calculation to go. I'm gonna find my formula, my quick formulas I'm doing today will both be up here, but make sure to attend next week's class for formulas and functions that will go more in depth and hopefully you'll learn a whole lot more there of all the different formulas. So we're doing a total sales, so that would be a sum. It's now asking what numbers you wanna include in your formula. So I'm going to click and highlight all the cells that I want included in this formula. And we'll hit enter. And it does the calculation. So when I click on that cell, here it is. Now, once you get super familiar with formulas, and all that jazz, you can probably just go ahead and start typing that, but that's above the basic skill level for now. So I'm just gonna come down here. I'm going to do a fun little formula, do equal sign, sum, open parentheses. I'm gathering just a couple numbers from a couple of random employees. So we'll do D3 and F4, close parentheses. Oh, oh, I didn't do the right 
symbol there in the middle. So yeah, let's do that. I did some formula. Next week, find out more information. <laughs> All right, I have a couple more questions for you. So awesome. if you want to select the entire column, how can you select all instead of dragging to the bottom? Yeah, yes, that's really easy to do. You'll just click on the column header. So if I wanted to select all of column B, I would click on that and it would highlight the whole column. Same with rows on the left hand side here. If I wanted to highlight all of row six for Betty, I just click on that and it would highlight that whole row. And then we also have a request to demonstrate freezing rows and columns again. Oh, yes, yes. Happy to do that. That's my favorite. So I'm actually. Before we do that, let me take out this row. I don't want to confuse you all, but it, it would be different from when I did it last time. So I'm going to delete our row here and we'll delete the entire row. So freezing is up here in the view tab. In the middle, you can click on freeze panes and it will bring up our options to either freeze that top row or our first column. Again, if you wanted to freeze both, the first row and first column, you would want to select B2 because it freezes above and to the left. Hope I'm not confusing, but I want to, it freezes above and to the left, much like inserting rows and columns, everything's above and to the left. So we'll click freeze panes, freeze panes, and there we go. We've got our first column and first row frozen. So if you had lots of data, it'd be super helpful to figure out what is going on here. All right, I do wanna give you all a little bit more information about some other resources we have. You can access lynda.com through the library's website, planolibrary.org. Click on the Learn tab, scroll down to Research and Learn, and here's where we have a lot of our databases. That includes Linda. She first appears here under the Business tab. You will have to have a Plano Library card in order to access. You'll enter that along with your PIN number, which is the last four digits of your telephone number. Once you enter that in, you have access to a whole bunch of great videos to learn any technology skills you may have. And beyond technology, they do some marketing and customer service. Great resource for you all. I went ahead and searched for Excel to see what all we have here. And there's over 6,700 results. I would recommend using the filters on the left hand side. As we are just getting the Excel basics, let's click on beginner and I'll bring up a thousand results, still a lot of results, but it, it can really narrow down into what you need to learn Excel for. Like here's a video, an hour long video for Excel for marketers. Mr. Oz here, he's quite the character. I really enjoy his videos, so I hope you all check him out. He's a lot of fun, but that is Excel. And if you want some more one-on-one -on -one help with one of our librarians here at the library, that is an option. So back to planolibrary.org. On the about link, there is a box to get help from a librarian slash suggest an item. And here is a link for a form you could fill out if you want to just get that one on one help with the library and we are happy to meet with you. We're mainly meeting virtual as we're still do limiting services, but if you want any one on one help you have a specific question, we can try to answer that for you. And also, this is the first part of a series focused on Excel. Next week is formulas and functions. That will be Wednesday, December 16th. 
After that is charts, tables, and visualizations on the 23rd. And then we'll wrap up with some pivot tables on the 30th. You can find all of that on our calendar here on the library's website, planolibrary.org. Simply click on the, one of those Wednesdays to see more information about the program, including the link to register for Zoom. If you haven't registered with the series, you should be registered for all. All right, we just have a couple minutes. Does anybody have any questions that I can answer? A recording will certainly be emailed out in the next few days. So look for that if you want to keep on reviewing your basics. We did have someone ask if you can easily demonstrate how to change the position of a column or row in your spreadsheet. Aha. So if we wanted to move total sales past December, perhaps, going to zoom out. I'm not sure why I'm blanking, but my what I'm coming to mind right now would be to you can copy a whole row by right clicking on the column name. So if I want to move total sales, I could click on column right click on column B copy and right click here on column O and we'll paste and it lost the formulas, but that's a, just a quick way, just a quick way since we're running out of time. All right, it is two o'clock, so we gotta get along on our way. I wanna thank you all for attending. I hope you found this class to be helpful and I hope we see you join in on the next three weeks to learn more about Excel.